For starters, I have never been good at handwriting. Seeing as most kids with quote-unquote bad handwriting have decided that handwriting really should be rendered pointless with devices and such, it could come as a surprise that I've taken an interest in such a skill as calligraphy. But whether it be that my mother really wanted me to write neatly, or the fact that I was just bad at it to start with, here I am with my passion project being calligraphy. Now, this video will contain some words that you possibly will not understand. Other words will have different meanings than in casual language. Let me explain. Print, a style of writing that is not joined up, not related to actual printers. A character, basically a letter. Write, a generalization of any form of drawing, a character. Hand lettering, also referred to as modern calligraphy, the art of drawing letters. Fountain pen, a pen that involves a cartridge to get ink. Dip pen, a pen that needs to dip into the ink. A cursive, I'm pretty sure you'll know this one. Joined up writing, script, a font, manuscript, a document that is written by hand rather than typed or printed. Illuminate, doodle and add different scribbles on after the word is written. Now, during this video, I will go through three sections the history of calligraphy, my own journey, and how you can make your own calligraphy if you feel so inclined. They are all as equally important to an understanding as each other, so I hope it turns out interesting enough for you to sit through. First, what is calligraphy? Well, calligraphy is quite simply the art of writing. It's the extreme version of fancy cursive, if you would like. But while it may be similar to cursive in its looks, calligraphy is actually more similar to printing. The main purpose of cursive is to write quickly, consistently, for a long period of time. This explains the joins and swirls, as the word is really just a line. Calligraphy, however, has the opposite purpose. Its purpose is to look aesthetically pleasing and complement the other things on your wall. You also lift your pen off the page a lot in calligraphy. The O letter is actually two strokes, not one. Now, how did calligraphy start off? Though the style I learnt was reminiscent of medieval European calligraphy, calligraphy actually started up in East Asia, namely China. The first appearance of Chinese characters were on oracle bones. These were imprinted, printed onto the base. Tortoise shells, animal bones, jade, clay, etc. And then later carved. They were also written onto bamboo and wood blocks. It was highly admired, mainly for aesthetic beauty, and was considered a prized art form even before landscape painting became popular. Currently, the two are very closely tied. Now I'm gonna mispronounce some words here so sorry if i um offend anyone there are in fact five styles of modern chinese calligraphy seal yun clerical li regular kai running zing and cursive yi and as calligraphy became more and more well known there were four main tools that were used the brush the ink the paper and the inkstone to grind the ink Meanwhile, in Europe, the style I learned was being printed. As in a lot of countries, it was used for writing out religious texts, among other things. A staple of European calligraphy was the detailed first letter of the page and throughout the border. One of the early scripts is labelled Caroline. One of the fonts I learned slightly resembles Caroline, but there are glaring differences, such as the A. Later on, it developed into black letter, which is a style I learned. Black letter, or gothic, is very blocky, which slightly resembles the architecture of the time. It was used for a small, compact style to, to cheapen up writing costs and get more on the page. And if you felt particularly fancy, you can also embellish the capital letters with lines and diamonds. With the rise of printing, calligraphy fell in popularity. An illuminated manuscript was not convenient anymore. However, calligraphy did not completely disappear. A clear distinction between the more fancy, time-consuming style and the easy letter-writing style became apparent. 
and as the 19th century ended, someone named Edward Johnston arrived. He is regarded as the father of modern calligraphy. At one point, he was asked to develop a new font for London Underground, which is still used today. And here we arrive at modern calligraphy. Some of you may be more familiar with modern calligraphy than traditional calligraphy. It focuses on the end result and less on the process as you go back and illuminate a lot. It often uses brush pens rather than fountain pens or dip pens to achieve the end result. It's also far more freeform than traditional calligraphy, which includes copying the letter exactly to get your end result. So that's roughly the history of calligraphy. Now, as a child, I was never really any good at handwriting. It was mostly scribbles, and nobody could really read it. This could either be because I never cared, or because the modern schooling system never cared. And either way, it was horrible. I mean, generally, I preferred typing and the content over the look of my handwriting. And it stayed that way until lockdown. Lockdown 2020 arrives. For two months, everyone is locked up in their houses and barely allowed to go out. And schoolwork was online. The students hadn't done this before. The teachers hadn't done this before. And nobody really learned anything. But my mum, she saw an opportunity. Using Twinkle, she printed off handwriting sheets for us to complete. I completed one to two letters per day. Soon, I could write in cursive. But print was still what I automatically wrote in. I think it helped my handwriting though, and soon enough I was using fountain pens. At first I didn't see my mum's obsession with them, but I still used them, and quickly I found the pencil stiff and the ballpoint. I hate ballpoints. Now, 2021, and I still have trash handwriting. My brain was on a roller coaster with the content of my writing at that point, so handwriting was put aside. Again. But alas, another lockdown hit, and it's back to the sheets. This time I didn't focus on it as much, using joined up for some letters and spaces for others, but I was still using a fountain pen. At the start of 2022, it was pretty similar to last year, but in our stationery boxes, we get this wonderful thing called refill i doodled on it because what else are you supposed to do my one from last year literally wasn't used at all another thing that happened was i got covid lucky me anyways i got really into handwriting during that time period two weeks because i literally got covid on the last day of isolation my mum also got a calligraphy set which i proceeded to basically steal I spent basically the whole day figuring out how calligraphy worked and the fact that the O was two strokes basically blew my mind back at school and I'm giving the hardest piece of work I've ever had to complete, me, when I am 80. Well, I spend the first 30 minutes with brain fail. Then I write brain fail onto the page. Then I actually start working by writing my opinions on the state of the world, which are just my current opinions, and in a few days, I'm publishing it. Why is this important? Because I forgot my fountain pen. So I used a ballpoint and printed it so it was legible. My hand was in buckets of paint, and I basically realized that I hate ballpoints. So soon after, my mum bought me a dip pen and some ink. And what do I do? Make lots of little calligraphy artworks using none other than cereal boxes. I had decided to have Generations as my passion project, project, but I changed it to calligraphy because A, I absolutely loved calligraphy, and B, who wants to explain Gen Z humour? I mean, it's really confusing. So that's where I've come to. Now, how do you actually write calligraphy? There are a few things, but first... What do you need? At least for traditional calligraphy, you need ink, bottled if you're using a dip pen, cartridges if you're using a fountain pen, a flat nibbed pen, dip or fountain. If you're using a dip pen, a paintbrush is also helpful, a roller and a pencil. And that's all you need if you just want to write, but to create artworks, you also need 
a rubber, scissors or an X-Acto knife, and cream or white coloured cardboard. I use cereal boxes and a glue stick. Depending on the texture you want, you can also use a toothbrush, glad wrap, pastels and ribbon. So I'm going to record in a different way this time. I film myself doing some calligraphy and I'm going to speak and I've sped it up and I'm just going to film myself talking about it and I'm outside so if you hear a car going by that's what that is. So in calligraphy it's basically it's all about the angle you hold your pen really because if you hold your pen on like a what 90 degree angle you're going to get a different um look than if you hold your pen on say a 70 degree angle um just because of the way the flat nibbed pen works um and the ink f and the way that the ink flows through the pen yeah um and so you even though it's really hard one of the tips you've got to use in calligraphy is you've got to try and hold the pen at the same angle basically the entire time and um those things where you do the little swirly whirlies and um you kind of practice all the calligraphy videos i've watched on modern calligraphy at least because i don't think i've actually watched many on traditional calligraphy um say that you've got to practice putting effort on the downstrokes now that may while well, that might be true in um modern calligraphy and traditional calligraphy you don't actually have to try that much the pen kind of does it for you but it is still good to practice the kind of going up and down and up and down because it's good to practice the keeping the same angle because it can feel um really hard on the hand sometimes and some letters like the z in this font or the e in um black letter do call for you to um not the e rather the a in black letter call for you to move your pen around a bit but generally you don't want to do that you want to try and keep it the same the entire time and the reason why it's got so many strokes is so that um a the pet you don't go over the same strokes multiple times um so because otherwise it's just gonna some parts are gonna look like out of place thicker than the others when it comes to the actual calligraphy and other places are gonna just look weird um and so that's why generally you do that um and another thing is if you have a dip pen right if you take a paintbrush and dip it into the ink and then put the paintbrush and you kind of paint it onto the dip pen that's way more helpful than if you like don't do that um because then you can get an even flow of ink if you're using a fountain pen however you don't have to worry that much okay some more tips there on calligraphy except i've got this at um normal pace now it's not sped up so you can see how slow you actually do go when you do calligraphy right now i'm writing a bj thing so basically what this gives you is the chance to have an ascender and a descender and the ascender is the part above you know the line i think yeah i'll point an arrow to it and the descender is the other part see i'm circling them now um and that's the x height and x height is you know x and then that's an ascender and that is a descender or descender or whatever um so that bg thing is a really good thing to get both the ascender and the descender down and this is an ampersand um because i like saying ampersand so i wrote it <laughs> um yeah and as you can see the ampersand is not all the way at the top i think for capitals at least in um at least in round hand um aren't quite as tall as the as ascenders they're kind of a little bit below so the ampersand um represents that and i'm writing some exclamation marks now see the full stop is just you know a diamond and the comma is just kind of a diamond with a little thing at the end um one of the main co common problems people have in calligraphy um 
is you see the little bits where I kind of go up at the end uh, with the P and the Q. People often exaggerate those and you don't want to exaggerate exaggerate them. You just want to kind of have them flow naturally. Kind of move your pen to the left as you lift, right rather, as you lift your pen off. Um, I, as you can see here, I'm representing the O thing again. You want your O to become two strokes, not one. So as you can see here, it doesn't look like the O that is on the left. Okay, so um, if you actually want to um, create the calligraphy piece into an artwork, there are a few other things you need to do. Now, the first step is probably to rule up the guidelines. Um, now, guidelines, what they are, but, um, what they are basically, is they are the things that will help you uh, create all your letters to be roughly the same. So for um, round hand, it is one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Now, um, one, two, three. Okay, and then what you do after that is pencil and you get a ruler. And you kind of rule across. Now, the reason why I don't have an actual ruler is because I cannot find one. Um, yeah, otherwise I would use a, I would use a real ruler. Once you've ruled those out, you probably want to decide on the word you want to write. So I'm gonna write. I'm gonna write the name of my soft toy cat Onyx. So um, I write out the letter O, and then carefully. I write out the rest of it. Another thing you want to do is you want to write the same word multiple times. And then after that you want to decide which one you think is the best. Like I can already tell this one is horrible because the starting was horrible. And sometimes it does turn out that the first one was the best. Like in my opinion, I think the first one is the best. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and cut out the first one. So now I've cut that out. Generally, what you want to do after that is what you want to do is you want to get just you know, an average rubber and you want to rub the pencil lines out. Like so. Um it's funny how much rubbing out you actually do in lots of forms of artwork. Um, yeah, like, because like in just even drawing faces, you rub out lines a lot. So there. And then if you want, see how here it's a bit, um, like, uneven, just go back. Okay, so since I've got that done, you might have heard earlier in the video I was talking about different things you can do. So, with the pastels, basically, you get pastel dust. And you can add little touches onto your... Uh, artwork like that. 
see how it's bluer on one edge. And now, we're gonna come back to this again. We're gonna get paintbrush. And you're just gonna, it is helpful if you use a under border for this so you don't get like um, ink anywhere. Just paint it, paint a bit, paint a lot, paint however much uh, you want. Depending on how big your word, word is, you're gonna want um, however many that level number of paint, you know? Um, yeah, so, often I go really thick just because it's easy to make it completely uh, black and really thick because um, then it looks more professional um, if you don't have like perfectly even strokes. So, so yeah, you just want to paint like that. You also would have seen me earlier in the video, I said you can use a toothbrush. Now what you use a toothbrush for, I'm just going to use this effort brush here, but get ink like so. Right, so we're gonna take this, I always take this, and you can't just, you know, the star effect. I'm sure you've seen it before, so you just kind of... A toothbrush is better, but you can do the same with him, yeah. Never mind, I don't know what the, I was trying to do with that. But, yeah. And if you want, you can use the pastel familiar. Like that. Okay, and now is the actual part. So I'm um, get scissors. And shop. Okay. So now what you want to do is you want to size up now one problem with using car um zero car body you see there's like um white bits around so just what you want to do is you want to take the paintbrush and you want to just kind of paint those out like that it's quite easy. And then, okay. Now next, I'm gonna get a glue stick, mine is shabby. Just wanna glue them onto each other. Like so. For some reason it's decided it doesn't want to stay. And that's bad. <laughs> you could also just glue first on here and then stick it like that and then just if you want move it around to your um preferred size afterwards. Yeah like that. And boom um Occasionally I'll have little spirals on afterwards, but you don't really need to do that. Yeah, that is um, a piece of artwork. Yeah, so originally to end with, I was going to do some bloopers, but I'm too tired to do that right now, so um, I'm just going to say bye.